welcome to another Combat Patrol painting series with me, the War Hipster. And yes, it's finally here. It's the First Legion themselves, the Dark Angels. So, we're going to be painting this whole box. What you get in the box is you get five intercessors. I've got four here because, well, I've already got one that you can see a tutorial for here, uh, here on YouTube. We've also got the Primaris Chaplain, we've got three Inceptors, and we've got the Redemptor Dreadnought as well. Now, these three units have all been primed in Wraithbone, and this guy has been primed in Grey Seer. So, without further ado, I'm going to grab our paints and brushes, and then we're going to get started. So the place we're going to start is on our Redemptor Dreadnought. Now you might be thinking he's looking a little bit shorter than he did just a moment ago. Well, that's uh, that's true because I've actually got his torso and his legs built in two different sub-assemblies. And this is just for the ease of filming and showing you what's happening. So as I say, the place where we are going to start is on the Redemptor Dreadnought. And we're going to start by painting in all the mechanical details. And the colour we're going to be using is Iron Warriors. And the reason for this is just so that we can get in there, get this bit out of the way, and then we can go on and do the armor later. Rather than do the armor first, then have to struggle around trying to get it done around all of that lovely green that we're gonna paint in. So you just wanna paint this over everywhere that you wanna be silver that's kind of inside him. You don't have to worry about doing things like the metal areas on the guns and stuff like that. We just wanna do these inner workings like this and of course it goes without saying we want to do this on the legs and on the body as well <laughs> and with all that iron warriors applied to the legs as you can see we've also done it on the torso as well so just popping that to one side for a second what we're going to do now is we're going to shade it and we're going to make a rough rough mix here because uh, we want to have a nice flow with the paint and the paint that we're going to be using is basilicanum gray but we're also going to be using some contrast medium to just make it a little bit easier and also so it goes a little bit further and it doesn't render all of that iron warriors completely blackened down which it can do if you use too much basilicanum gray at once so the mix that we're making is roughly two parts contrast medium to one part basilicanum grey. Now a question I often get asked is how do I make my mixes? Well it's very simple. You take a brush load of contrast medium, that's one brush load, and then we take another good healthy brush load like that, and that's two parts contrast medium, and then just straight in, grab one part basilicanum grey and mix that down on the palette. And then we just go crazy. We start shading all of that silver with this color. Now you might have to make quite a few mixes to do this. So it will take a bit of time, but it's absolutely worth it. So as you can see, it's already applying that kind of really lovely shading to that silver, whilst also not completely destroying it which as I say, it, it can do if you're really not very careful. If you want to, you of course can do basilicanum grey straight out of the pot. If you want it to be really, really, really dark. And so with that basilicanum grey mix applied to all of that Iron Warriors, whilst it's drying, what we're going to do is we're going to put it to one side. Same with the, the body mm -hmm. itself as well. And we're actually just going to quickly... Before we move on and do the green on the Dreadnought, we're going to just do the black on this guy. Now, the colour that we're going to be using first is Shaiish Purple. And we're using this all over his armour to give him a real kind of malevolent, ancient, black vibe armour. You'll have seen me just do this on the Shadow Keepers tutorial. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But I was really, really happy with how that scheme turned out and I want to see what it looks like on this chaplain. It just so happens that a veteran chaplain, Primaris Marine of the first company, I feel should have 
a slightly different, kind of more sinister looking style of armor. So that's why we're using the Stretch Age Purple before we do the black. Just want to be a little bit careful once we get close to that cloak. The less mistakes we make now, the easier it is for us in the long run. And with that shyish purple all applied now what we're going to do is we're going to cover over it with black templar so we do so you just take that black templar on a brush and then much like we just did with the shyish purple you just start coating it all over and what you'll notice is that the black templar comes out a lot darker than it would if it came out normally if you just did it straight onto the model it's black templar on its own but what you'll see is because of the way that contrast works get a kind of purplish hue on all of those edges you can see down there on the foot, which is awesome. It's just awesome. I love it so much. And so with that Black Templar applied, what we're going to do is just going to move him to one side because it is now time to work on all the green armour on all the rest of the miniatures. So this includes the intercessors, it includes the inceptors, and it also includes the redemptor dreadnought. Now you've seen me do this on an intercessor before, so I'm actually going to show you on an inceptor. And I am going to show you on the dreadnought as well. We're going to do the dreadnought slightly differently to how we're going to be doing the infantry guys. So the colour that we're using is Dark Angels Green. And we're just going to go straight from the pot and straight onto the model. Now, what we want to do with the Dark Angels Green is we don't want to be afraid of how much we've got on the brush. We want to move quite quickly with it, but still try and be as methodical as possible. Like this, to get a nice, consistent, darker green. And the reason I say don't be afraid of how much you've got on your brush, if you have two not, if you don't have enough on your brush with Dark Angels Green, you're not going to get the finish that you want. It's not going to be smooth, it's not going to be dark like this. It's going to be a little bit thin, a little bit kind of washed out, and then it's going to start to look patchy as well. And that's not what we want, obviously. We want this nice, deep forest green. Now, if you do have some errors in it, don't worry, we are going to demonstrate how to correct this with a glaze, which if you've seen my Dark Angels Intercessor video before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You just want to go across all of your miniatures like this now, colouring them in, except that Redemptor Dreadnought, which we're going to come to in just a second. And with that Dark Angels Green applied to our Inceptors and our Intercessors, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on the Redemptor Dreadnought's green armour. Now the colour that we're going to be using for this first is Warp Lightning. And this is to add us a little bit of a pre-shade over the top, well underneath, before we get to putting our Dark Angels Green on over the top. We just want to get this Warp Lightning all over. Like so. And so with all that warp lightning applied, what we now want to do is we want to layer over it with some Dark Angels Green. Now you can thin this down with a little bit of contrast medium, you can do a one-to-one, -one, and I suspect I probably will do that on the larger open panel or panels, just to improve the flow a little bit. 
And what we want to do is we just want to get this Dark Angels green all over the top of our armor panels. Like this. Now, the other thing that you're going to find is it is going to come out a bit scratchy. There's nothing really that you can do about that. But what we are going to do after we've done this is we're going to smooth out all the green across all of our armor panels. Using a delicious glaze. So it doesn't matter too much if it comes out a little bit streaky. And a little bit scratchy. Because it's just something you're just going to have to wear, unfortunately. It comes out quite nicely. Straight from the pot on these slightly small areas. Again, the trick with it is to not be afraid of how much you've got on your brush. But don't go too crazy in terms of overloading your brush, because if you do that, it'll just be really, really almost kind of black. As you can see, I've already done this bit up here and a bit on the back of this foot. So it's at this point we've got these kind of larger open areas where I'm going to give my contrast medium pot a shake. And I'm going to take one brush load of it pop it on my palette and then one brush load of Dark Angels Green. Pop that on the palette and mix it together. And then I'm just going to start painting this over. What you're going to see is it's going to be a little bit weaker. It's almost definitely going to be a little bit scratchy but it's going to be less scratchy than it would be if I just used the Dark Angels Green straight out the pot. And so with that Dark Angels green applied, what we're now going to do is, as I said, we are going to use that glaze to smooth it all out. So as you can see, it's a little bit inconsistent around here. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make it nice and consistent. And we want to kind of eliminate any streaks and any blotches, as well as just kind of enrich any slightly lighter colours. Now the colour that we're going to make is a roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part Caliban green mix. This gives us a nice thin down Caliban green. And what we want to do is we just want to very simply start painting this really thin down green over the flats of the panels on all of our green armoured miniatures. Just like that. As you can see on that crotch plate, it's already starting to do its business. Now what you can do as you're doing this if you just avoid any of the edges and any of the recesses, what you'll do is you'll retain all of that contrasty goodness, but you'll smooth out any of the mistakes. Now, it doesn't matter too much if you do get some of this Caliban green mix over the top of some of those edges. That's okay, because we are going to do edge highlighting a little bit later on to just kind of bring it all back out. But try, if you can, to avoid the recesses. Now, if you do get any of this in the recesses, just use a little bit of Basilicanum Grey in there, just to kind of restore that much darker contrast. And so, with that glaze applied to our Redemptor Dreadnought, to our intercessors and to our inceptors. All of the green armor is now fully base coated. So we've also now done all of the first layer 
of armor for all of our miniatures in the combat patrol. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to pop Mr. Redemptor Dreadnought to one side just for a moment, because whilst a lot of his details are very similar to the infantry, uh, some of their kind of recipes are slightly different. So for example, the, uh, the big plasma cannon, whilst it has a red casing, much like these guys ranged weapons will have, same for the chaplain. We're going to do it slightly different on the Redemptor General, just because of the size of him. And of course, you know, he deserves his time in the spotlight. What we are going to do, however, is we are just going to focus on the infantry just for a moment. And we're going to colour in some base coats on these guys just to get them ready for the highlighting and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is just going to pop him to one side and demonstrate this on the intercessor because we're going to do the very simple thing of taking some black Templar and painting in all of the soft joints in the armour. Now there aren't any soft joints on the Redemptor Dreadnought. And there aren't any kind of really visible ones that won't already be black on our Primaris Chaplain. So we're just gonna very quickly do this bit. come back. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to use some Saigor Brown to paint in the leather details. Now, this is going to include areas like the belt and the straps and any of the kind of pouches and things on stuff like the intercessors and the inceptors, if you've included any. Now, there's quite a lot of leather details on the chaplain including his rather large coat. So we're not just doing the Saigor Brown on that just yet. We're gonna do that next slightly differently. But he does have some pouches on the chaplain. So we do wanna do those with the Saigor Brown. We wanna do that coat slightly differently. So we're not gonna do every single leather detail in the same way. So I'll demonstrate in just a second. So on our chaplain, we've got his holster here, as well as the strap that holds it on, and the belt that we want to be this Saigor brown colour. As I say, his coat will be a different colour, so we're not going to do that with just this neat Saigor brown. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to use some skeleton horde. We're going to use this for a number of different details. And the first thing we're going to do is on our inceptors and on our, on our intercessors, we're going to use this skeleton horde all over the top of their aquilas on their chests. Just like that. Nice and simple. What we're also going to do is going to use the skeleton horde over the top of any paper. So we've got some here on the shoulder pad. Like that. What we've also got on this guy, for example, is we've got his purity seal down here. We're going to do this over the top of. Like that. On our Redemptor Dreadnought, we're similarly going to colour in any of the paper. So we've got this big bit here. But according to the box art, the Dreadnought has a gold chest aquila 
So we're going to follow that. But if you wanted to, you could also do this one with the skeleton horde. And then do that chest of colour. And I'll do that paper there with a different colour. For example, like a basilicanum grey. And then make it like a white paper rather than an aged paper. So we also want to colour in the purity seals on the dreadnought like that. Whereas on our chaplain, we've got a number of things to do. So, firstly, we do have areas like his purity seal that we want to do this on. We've got the pages on the book on the back here. That we want to use the skeleton hoard on. Like that. And then what we want to do is we want to use this over the top of the bones here. And we want to use it over the top of his skull mask as well. Got a bit more paper on his shoulder pad there, which I need to just neaten up with some grace here. Now what we also want to do we want to use the skeleton horn to add a pre-shade to our leather jacket coat. We want to use the skeleton horn all over the outside and the inside of the jacket. Or coat. It's more of a coat. It's not really a jacket. It's too big to be a jacket. There we go, just like that. So this will also include the area on his chest. So he's going to look very bone once he's done. It will also include his hood. And we want to paint in these long paper trails here as well. You just want to go around like this, picking out all of this skeleton hoard detail, for example. This is still part of his great coat. And then we've got a bit going down here as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do over the top of our skeleton hoard on the leather coat and the hood and all that stuff is we're going to use some wildwood. Now it's much the same principle. As the previous application, just want to do a nice, even, smooth coat of this paint all over the top. Like so. And with that done, we now want to highlight his coat using some Carrick Stone. So we just want to pick out all of those edges. Just like that. And with that done, our highlights are a little stark. And of course, we've still got quite a light brown here. So what we want to do is we want to weather out that cloak, make it look a little bit more kind of, well, practical. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a rough, roughly two parts contrast medium to one part basilicanum grey mix. I'm going to use this over the top of our of our great coat like this. To add just a little bit more kind of colour in there, but also to kind of take the warmth out of it a little bit. Also, just to blend those highlights in to our coat a little bit more. And so with that done, our leather jacket is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop that to one side. There you go. Quick, quick.
quick spin around. Woo! There we go. <laughs> I'm going to pop him to one side and we're just going to pick up the body of our Redempt Dreadnought. Here he is. And what we're going to do, we're going to grab some Basilicanum Grey. We're going to use this to paint in the black details on his, on his body. So this is going to include areas such as the barrel, the front part of the plasma exterminator. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, the, the, the barrel of the plasma weapon, the kind of casings of the storm bolters, and we want to paint in the casings on the sarcophagus as well. Now the color that we're going to be using for this is Basilicanum Grey. And what we want to do, for example, here on the casing is we just want to take it up to where that kind of, that gilt edge is, that kind of the, uh, the decorating feature of the sarcoph sarcophagus is like that. Similarly around here, just want to do it up to that where they kind of, we've glued that front plate, plate on like this with our Basilicanum Grey. And so with that done, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't just quickly point out that we've done the similar thing on our Inceptor. So we've got the kind of foot guards, the front parts of the plasma weapons, and we've got the cables as well going back up there. We've also done those with the Basilicardum Grey. So what we are gonna do now is we're gonna color in these and make them black. So I'm just gonna demonstrate this on him first of all. And the color that we are using is of course, Black Templar. And all we wanna do, just get a nice, even coat, black templar, all over these details. Just like this. Like that. Similarly, on our dreadnought, we take our black templar and we just go over the top. of our Basilicon and Grey details. Like so. And what we can also do at this point, for example, ooh, make sure we do the underside. What we can also do at this point is paint in these areas in the hips of our dreadnought. So we've got this area like this, which we want to be black. We can just do this over the top of our shaded Iron Warriors. It's absolutely fine. We want to do a similar thing in the shoulder joints of our Dreadnought's body. We've got areas like this just here, which we want to colour over with the Black Templar as well. And so with that done, what we now want to do is colour in any of the weapon casings, which are going to be a nice, bright red. However, on the Redemptor Dreadnought, if we just go straight in with the Blood Angels red, it can be a little bit difficult to keep it nice and smooth. So what we are going to do is we're going to do, just on the Redemptor Dreadnought, just on this big plasma weapon, we are going to do a pre-shade of Griff Hound Orange. Now you could do this on all of your uh, weapons if you really wanted to, so that they all have this kind of exactly the same tone but it honestly won't need it on the uh, bolt rifles and bolt pistols and things like that it's just on here that you're going to want to do that griff hound orange first just to make sure that that blood angels red has got something to cling on to when it goes on
And with that Griffhound orange applied, what we're now going to do is we are going to paint in that red. So what we do is we take our Blood Angels red and we just start painting it over the top. Of our Blood Angels red. Of our Griffhound orange. For goodness sake. Just like that. See? Getting us a nice rich... Deep red. Like so. But what we also do is we use this to colour in the weapon casings on any of the rest of our weapons. Which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. I'm just going to finish this section. Like that. Just pop home to one side just for a moment. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush here. It's one of our Primaris Chaplin, for example. We've got his heavy bolt pistol just here. We want to use this Blood Angels Red. Just like this. So with that done, what we now want to do is we want to pick out the Dark Angels at iconography on their shoulder pads and any kind of prayer beads or rosary beads I suppose they would be with some Corax white because these are going to be white but we don't want to just throw the Apothecary white over the top of Wraithbone because it's it just it doesn't look white. It gives you this really kind of weird interaction. It gives you kind of like a brownish grey. So you just want to get this Corax white all over like this. Similarly, on these beads here. And next up, we're going to use some Apothecary white over the top of that Corax white that we've just applied. With that apothecary white applied to all of our chapter iconography like that what we're now going to do is we're going to color in some metallics now the first color that we're going to use is some thins down iron warriors i'm going to use this for all of the silver details on all of our miniatures so for example here on this gentleman's sword and the various kind of pipes and vents and things that are on his backpack, as well as his bionic eye up here. I want to just cover this colour all over. Just like that sort of thing. Like that. Similarly, on areas like the Chaplin, we want to colour in any of the areas that we want to be silver. So, for example, 
Got his bolt pistol. There he is like that. Whereas on the Redemptor Dreadnought, we want to colour in all the areas that we didn't already colour in with the silver. So there's going to be areas like the, the working mechanics. Of our plasma weapon. If you need a hand, just check out the box art to see where you should put your silver details. So with all that silver applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the soft wraps, but as well as any of the kind of purity seals that we have across our guys. So for example, on him, we've got the soft wrap on his Crozius. We've also got some purity seals on our Redemptor Dreadnought, and we've got the purity seals on our Intercessors, and we've got the wrap on his sword as well. So the colour that we're going to be using for this is Volupus Pink. And all we want to do is take that Volupus Pink on our brush, just start painting it over the top of these details. Just being careful around any of those other details that might be present that we've already painted in. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Retributor armor to paint in all of the gold details. So we're just going to start picking them out. So we've got the little sword down here on this guy's rosary beads, as well as the little skull next to it. Also got that skull just there on his pauldron. And so with all of that gold applied across all of our miniatures, so there's our intercessor, pop him just there, and there's our Primaris Chaplain, all goldified. What we're going to do is we're just going to quickly finish off the rest of the base coats and then we're going to apply some shading. So, the next colour that we're going to use is Talisar Blue and we're going to be using this for all of our plasma coils. So what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this on the Redemptor Dreadnought because that seems to make the most sense because he's got the biggest plasma gun. That's all we want to do. So we're going to take our Talisar Blue on our brush and we just want to coat this all over our plasma coil. It really is as simple as that. However, on the Redemptor Dreadnought, we've got these areas just under here as well. We want them to be Talisar Blue too. So we just want to get it all over these large ones here. So I want to put it, as I said, just down here as well. And with those plasma coils done on the Inceptors and the Redemptor Dreadnought as well, what we're going to do, pop them to one side, and we're just going to paint in the skin on our Intercessor. Now the colour I'm going to use for this is Dark Oath Flesh, because I think it's really nice colour, and I don't use it enough. So what I'm going to do, using a small layer brush, I'm just going to grab some. I'm just going to start painting it all over his face. Just like this. I want to go reasonably quickly here. So 
so that I don't get any drying happening. Because if it dries, that's when we get lines and streaks. And we don't want those. No, sir. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to paint in the cabling on the Dreadnought. And we're going to be using two colours for this. I'm going to be using Black Templar and Blood Angels Red. Now, we've got a couple of cables here on the back, which I've completely forgotten about until now. So we're just going to start with those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Black Templar on the ribbed cables just here. Like so. And then what I'm also going to do is use some Blood Angels Red on the smooth cables. Like so. And there's little connectors there that I've forgotten to do. I'm going to do them in the same way that we've done all the silver so far. So next up, all that's left to do for our base coats is to paint in this guy's book. Now the colour that we're going to be using is Flesh Terror's Red. I just want to get this all over like this. Just being careful around those other details that we've painted in. But because they're mostly metallics, if you do make a mistake, you just go back and neaten them up. And so with our book all coloured in, what we've got to do next is we've got to do some shading and we're going to do this on all the metallics and this will finally get them to a battle ready stage but of course we won't stop there we will go even further so the first shade that we're going to apply is fire slayer flesh and we're going to be using this on all of the gold it's very simple just take some on our brush and we just start painting it all over our gold details don't use loads at a time still want to retain all of that detail you don't want to drown any of that gold too much in the fire slayer flash. You just want to make sure that you get a good coverage of it. But also crucially so it still looks like it's a nice warm antique gold. Just like I'm doing here. And with that fire slayer flesh applied to all that gold, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some basilicanum grey. We're going to use this to shade all of our silver. Just like that. Now when it comes to shading the areas on the Redemptor Dreadnought, You can do it much the same way as we did the rest of the silver details. By just thinning, thinning down this basilicum grey in a 50-50, one-to-one mix type thing. The basilicum grey in con contrast medium. And that just make the flow a little bit easier. And a little bit easier to control as well. And so with those shades applied and all of our base coats complete, our Dark Angels Combat Patrol is now, well, part one is now finished. So these guys are what you could consider to be a battle ready level. So you could leave it here, but we're not going to. So come back for part two. And that is where we're going to cover how to do the highlights and how to take these guys up to the next level. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.